Oh, can I borrow your hat if you don't mind? Now, I want you to know that the devil thinks you're a smooth criminal. You've been shot by pow pow. You've been shot by pow pow. A smooth criminal. Lean with it. Y'all didn't see the lean. Y'all didn't miss who What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tunji's Podcast. I am your host, Tunji Taylor-Lewis. Um, once again, thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you who listen uh, most days, for those of you who watch most days, thank y'all so much. Um, today, I want to talk about uh, my taste in comedy and how that really uh, sort of contradicts my upbringing. Um, the reason why I say that is because, you know, um, as I've said in previous uh, podcasts, I am somebody who likes my comedy, you know, unfiltered, you know, raunchy, dirty, risky, you know what I mean? Like stuff that you're not really supp supposed to say, but, you know, some way, you know, the comedian found their way around it, i.e. Dave Chappelle, i.e. you know, you know, Louis C.K., i.e. Bill Burr, i.e. Andrew Schultz, um, Kevin Hart back in the day, Eddie Murphy for sure. That's how I like my comedy. I like my comedy just like raw and unfiltered. And the reason why I find that so interesting is because it's so different from my upbringing. Like I grew up in a really uh, Christian background. I'm still a Christian to this day. Uh, but the way I came up, like definitely in my house, there was no cussing, no cursing allowed. Uh, my mom didn't like any bathroom humor, so there was no, so we weren't allowed to do that in the house. Um, you know, I grew up in a very, you know, like you know, around around a lot of African Christians who, you know, they very they they monitored, you know, very much like what you said and did and and the types of movies you watch, especially when we were young, and. Um, I just find it so interesting that I came up in that environment and yet I kind of gravitated towards the type of comedy that would sort of be rejected in the circles that I came up in. Um, you know, by all accounts, I should be a very like, you know, sheltered, you know, pretty conservative dude who like, you know, Christians who like, you know, um, you know, try they, their, their hardest to be as accepting of people who aren't, you know, churchy people who don't speak christianese they try to be as accepting as possible but they low-key feel uncomfortable like i feel like i should be like one of those dudes right like people who are like you know like <laughs> you know like you know like fake evangelical and accepting of anybody but like i have oftentimes felt like i'm more of a part of you know like you know every day you know like artists and you know people who don't do faith-based art than I do with, you know, with, 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 with Christian artists. And uh, yeah, like I said, because of the way I grew up, it, it's just the strangest thing. I guess just naturally with my personality, um, uh, hold on, we got a comment here. I just wanted to say, I love your videos and don't, uh, and don't worry about, and, and sorry, this is, let me try to read this. I just want to say I love your videos and don't worry about who talks about you. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you very much, Ison Palmer 01. Really appreciate that encouragement, man. Thank you so much. Um, but as I was saying, I think naturally in my personality, I'm just somebody who, you know, when somebody tells me, you know, like, you know, yesterday I talked a whole bunch about like how I don't like people telling me what to do. Um, and ever since I was young, I, I, you know, if somebody told me something was bad or something, somebody told me I shouldn't do something, I shouldn't, shouldn't get into something. Um, if I couldn't logically for myself figure out the reason why um, something wasn't good or something was something I shouldn't get into, I would just like naturally like, you know, gravitate towards it. You know what I mean? Like I would just like be, I would just look at it and be like, well, why? Like, you know, I, I guess. Um, you know, as Christians, a lot of us um, get into the danger of like just, you know, taking whatever the pastor says as gospel and, and not really like thinking through our faith, you know, for ourselves and figuring out why we believe it for ourselves. Um, and, uh, you know, you know, I guess by the grace of God, I was lucky enough to like have the sort of, uh, I guess, skepticism or cynicism, whatever you want to call it, where when I was told something, when I was told it over and over and over again, if I couldn't like logically figure out, okay, like 
yes, this does apply to everyday life, then I would start to question it. And, you know, I started to question, you know, well, why is cussing and swearing so bad? Like, why is that something that would uh, affect my relationship with God? Like, why? And um, just for myself, I started to look at it and be like, you know, well, I see Kevin Hart selling out, you know, tours all over the world, you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing Steve Harvey, you know, selling out tours all over the world. I'm seeing Eddie Murphy having a huge impact on this world. And like, you know, as Christians, isn't that the impact that we're supposed to have? Like, you know, um, isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Like, you know, spreading the gospel all over the world. Like these people are doing what we're supposed to be doing. But we, meanwhile, we're in our little bubbles and our little four walls of churches, you know, huddled up and, you know, not swearing. Uh, meanwhile, I was just looking at it from the perspective of like, Kevin Hart is in a much better position to impact the world for Christ than we are right now, just by the sheer numbers. And so um, that's not to say that you should just all of a sudden go out cursing if you want to affect people for change for, for God or anything like that. My point is, is that whether you're cursing or not cursing, it ultimately does an effect whether or not God could use you. And this is like a real uh, uh, conclusion I came for in myself. And um, the thing that I realized with, you know, like with the swearing and cursing thing, it's just like, you know, like it, it just depends on the context. Like obviously you don't want to be cussing and swearing around your grandmother, or around church people, but if you're around your friends and, um, you need to use like language that they're comfortable with in order to get a message across to them it's much better if you're getting it if you're able to get the message across to them than worry so much about which words you're using um and yeah that's just sort of like one example of like how i've always been i've always been that way i've always been somebody who has to just like break it down and um you know i i, I definitely am not somebody who um who, um, who, you know, follows any certain, you know, philosophies or follows any certain ideas just because it's the popular one at this time or just because everybody else is doing it. Like, I really have to think through it myself. And, um, you know, um, you know I, I think that's, you know, that's, that's definitely uh, served me well. Um, at the same time, though, it has, you know, sort of caused a situation where I find myself having to explain myself to a lot of people and defend my, you know, point of view to a lot of people, which can be annoying sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, sometimes, you know, it just feels good to just be around people who understand you or just accept you no matter what, and you don't have to get into a, a whole back and forth and debate, you know what I mean? And, like, you know, I, I guess, you know, being naturally introverted, you know, you feel um, kind of... Um, you feel like everything in your own head makes sense and then you say things out of the things that make sense to you and it doesn't make that sense to somebody else and you gotta remind yourself like oh yeah like this is a uh, this is something that I came forward to myself and this people in this circle might not get it but um, yeah man uh, but you know but even with that being said I guess I, I guess I just find myself wondering uh, where that comes from because like you know I see a lot of uh, people who had the same upbringing I did and they're you know you know they're square as hell you know what I mean they're square like they don't you know you know <laughs> you know just the, cause the kind of content that I like kind of comedy that I get into like they literally start to tighten up their shoulders and cringe and all that stuff you know can't listen to a whole lot of rap music um, don't like the fact that you know Kanye. You know, I, I don't want to say Kanye because Kanye is just crazy. I, like I don't want to. That's a, another discussion for another day. But like questioning if you know Chance the rapper is you know really doing you know Christian stuff or stuff for the glory of God. You know what I mean? Like um, yeah. Um, you know I, I guess this discussion is kind of shifting into a different way than I expected, but. You know, I don't know how many followers I have who are believers out there or who, um, you know, who believe in God or anything like that. But, you know, if you do, like, just know that, you know, God can use everybody and you don't have to be a, a youth pastor. You, you don't have to be, a, you know, person like actively in the church for God to use you. You can just use the gift that you currently have. Use what you're currently uh, good at and, you um, God can use that, and God likes to use all sorts of skill sets and 
and uh and, and talents because you know he's the one that gave you those skill sets and talents so you know i definitely felt pressured to be a good you know um to be really churchy in in my in my art and uh i just started got, got i just started to get away from that and i just decided you know i'm just gonna honor god by being the best that i can be and being the best version of myself so um that's all the time i have for today what do we got art J. Chahill, don't know how to say that. Uh, bro, I love Kanye. Stop this. <laughs> you know what? I'll do something on Kanye. I'll, 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 I'll get to this whole Kanye thing because Kanye's, you know, driving me crazy, and he should be driving everybody crazy. But uh, for the time being, thank y'all so much for listening. Thank y'all so much for watching. Peace.